Originally, I planned to simply give a walk through uh, the Museum of Creation and Earth History. But as I looked at my photos and examined the statements made in that uh, museum, I decided that they needed to be dealt with in a little bit more detail. Hence, this will become a far larger project than originally planned and will require uh, more than one video to cover it. The Museum of Creation and Earth History In the 1970s, Dr. Henry M. Morris established the Institute for Creation Research, also known as the ICR. This institute also includes the Museum of Creation and Earth History. I recently visited this museum, again, I've been there several times in the uh, past, and took a few pictures I would like to share with those of you here on YouTube that may find it interesting. The ICR and museum are found here in Santee, California. Santee is a non-incorporated city of San Diego County. Uh, Santee is a relatively flat valley, about 20 miles inland uh, from the coast, surrounded by well-worn mountains. Uh, inland valleys here can be a little warm, and this day it was in the low 90s at 10 a.m., sunny and getting warmer. And being situated near the freeway, the air smelled of asphalt and car exhaust. The building that houses the museum also houses the ICR's Creation College and Research Facility, and looks more like an office building than a place, and I say this with reservation, of learning and research. The landscaping is well maintained, with trees and trimmed and raked grass. Uh, upon entering, I was met by a friendly woman in casual business-like attire, sitting behind a welcome desk. Uh, to the left are several bookshelves containing creationist scientific literature as well as Christian inspirational books. And not really been interested in those, I went right into the museum itself. A Journey Through Time One of the first things one sees entering the museum is a large, nebulous question mark. And next to it, a placard's reading, Where did I come from? What happens after I die? What is the meaning of life? Valid questions all. And yet it seems instantly like a walk through a Christian tract rather than a museum. Right next to it is uh, the placard reading Day One, and an artistic rendition of what I suppose is the moment of creation. Behind me is a collection of photos and in the center, impossibility of observing origins. Questions regarding origins, or the age of things, cannot be answered by observational science. Thus, no one can prove scientifically whether or when creation or evolution took place, since the past is beyond our observation. We can study only the results of the past processes, and interpret the evidence in light of our worldview, while the evolutionary view can interpret the evidence with some success. The creationist interpretation is always better. This is not surprising, for this is what the Bible says. The exhibits in the museum outline the major events of history as recorded in, or reasonably inferred from, scripture. These events are used to interpret the scientific and historic data. The interpretation of data related to origins and earth history depends on one's world view. The first part of this statement flies in the face of what science is capable. We can reasonably determine ages. We can observe the past, as is somewhat admitted to in this statement, by fingerprints left behind. The comment about worldviews is nothing more than an attempt to say that one can interpret the data to say whatever one wants it to say. Science, on the other hand, deals with not what one wants to find but deals with where the data leads us. This is the nature of science, the constant quest for data, the constant need for to test hypotheses and theories, the obsessive need to follow the data wherever it leads, whether or not one likes the outcome. Having a world view is antithesis to science. There is no evolutionary world, world view. There is only the theory of evolution as derived from the data and tested continuously against newer data. What is science? 
Here is a perfect example of how creationists misrepresent and use outdated material in an attempt to bolster their position. Though it is correct that science is derived from the Latin scientia, meaning knowledge, the science as defined rather well by the Encarta Dictionary is the study of the physical and natural world and phenomena, especially by using systematic observation and experimentation. Not simply, as they say, an organized factual knowledge base on observation, not naturalistic speculation. Science is based first on observation, then models, otherwise known as hypotheses, are derived from those observations and tested against tested against further observation and or experimental research. Also, using such an old Christian bias dictionary to define a, wor a word does nothing to impart the actual modern meaning of that word. To truly understand the meaning of the word science, one must look to multiple modern sources, uh, such as multiple dictionaries, encyclopedias, cla uh, classes teaching the sciences, and scientists themselves. And other than an old Christian bias dictionary, none of them give us the impression like the one that the creationists try to slip by here. Continuing through the museum and the days of creation, we are met with biblical quotes and the almost laughable creationist theories like the canopy theory. At day four, we are met with a display room that could almost be found in any planetarium. We have pictures of nebulae, galaxies, planets, stars, the sun, the moon, and the earth, and all interspaced with placards promoting creationism and horribly misrepresents astronomy. Claims like galaxies wind themselves up too fast, there are too few supernova remnants, and comets disintegrate too quickly uh, are still found hanging on the wall, though they have been well refuted time and time again. The reference to galaxies was based on an extremely oversimplified computer model by, Do by D. Russell Humphreys. More accurate computer models indicate that the spiral structure of galaxies are a product of gravitational interactions between galaxies and tend to be rather robust. The reference to supernova is based on older observations. More recently, many more supernova remnants have been found, including several stage 3 remnants. Stage 3 remnants should not exist if the creation model is correct because they are far too old. And finally, the comets. Comets do disintegrate over time. But to assume that there are no new comets appearing would be to ignore comets like Hyakutake and Halebop. These single apparition comets do occur, and they are, in part, evidence for the Oort cloud that creationists also dismiss as scientific fantasy. I'll never understand why creationists feel compelled to retain such well-refuted claims. Of all the mysteries that still exist in the universe, this creationist practice is certainly one of them. That will be the end of the introduction to this series. Um, as you have noticed, I've only gotten through room four. Uh, there were several more rooms following this, and actually at the re point of this recording, I've only written maybe another 2,000 words on the subject. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. I will get more out when I can. <laughs>